Episode 143, Clean the Toilet, Liar. Oh, if it were not because of Gary's comparison, Sarah wouldn't have noticed that Alex's clothes were so expensive. She looked at him with even brighter eyes. I knew it. I thought Alex looked very smart. So it's that expensive, no wonder. <laughs> Alex and Sue both had unnatural smiles. Sue adjusted her position on the sofa, covering Alex's clothes even more. Alex also subconsciously covered his watch. Yarn's a lot of money, but he likes to spend it too. All the watch is spending in the future, Sue added. Alex, I like your shoes. Which mall did you buy them from? I'll also go buy a pair, Gary asked. Ah, Alex was caught off guard by his question. My mother bought them for me. Yes, my mother bought them for me, and I'm not sure where. I'm too busy at the company every day, so I don't have time for shopping. Alex and Sue finally felt relieved. What about your watch? Gary asked, before they could catch their breath. My mother bought it for me, too. I don't usually care about these things, Alex said as he braced himself. <laughs> this Alex. Sue, you have to help him more in the future. At his age, he can't just be relying on his mother, Sarah said with a kind smile. Alex, what's the name of your internet company? Where is it located? Gary asked aggressively. Um, our family's company's called... It's called the Cloud Network Company. It's located in... On... New Street Corner. No, New Street... Oh, 10th Street. Sue had discussed the name with Alex in the taxi, but they didn't talk about it in detail. He already had a lot of things to remember, and he couldn't get them all right. So, Sarah was also suspicious. She looked at Alex in confusion and then at her daughter. Alex has been studying abroad and doesn't know very much about his family situation right now, Sue said, quickly trying to smooth things over. That's not right. Alex just said that he was busy at the company every day, so he didn't have time to shop for his own clothes and shoes. His mother had to buy them for him, isn't that so? Gary keenly grasped the discrepancy. Yeah, what's going on, huh? Alex, Sue? Sarah couldn't help but ask. Mom, Alex was too careless. Sue wanted to find a way to smooth things over, but Gary started talking even louder. Do you still not understand? This guy called Alex has been lying since the moment he walked through the door. Gary pointed his finger at him. Do you think Alex is lying to me? Sarah looked at Gary in disbelief. That's right, Gary sneered as he walked over to Alex's side. He contemptuously tugged on his clothes. They're all fake, yet you dare to call yourself rich. Nonsense! Why did you say that? I don't want to see you here. Get out of here now. Seeing that the situation was getting worse, Sue stood up and angrily rebuked Gary. Sue, don't be silly. This is a swindler. Gary pointed at Alex and said provocatively, Do you dare to show your watch to her mother and me? Why should he show it to you? Who are you? What obligation do we have to show it to you? Get out of here right now. Once the watch was in their hands, the whole situation would be exposed. Sue had to kick Gary out immediately. Only then would she have a chance of surviving this mess. Shut up, Sarah shouted. She could tell that there was something fishy going on. She looked at Alex and said, Alex, let me see your watch. Alex was extremely conflicted. Sue was also feeling very anxious. What should she do? But now that he was forced into the situation, Alex lowered his head slightly and slowly raised his right hand. He pointed his watch at Sarah. He wanted to admit to her that he was pretending. Gary, what did you say about Alex's watch just now? Sarah glanced at the watch, but she didn't find anything wrong with it. Take a good look at the second hand on his watch again, Gary chuckled. Ah, why isn't the second hand of this watch moving? Sarah noticed that something was wrong, and at the same time she looked anxiously at Gary. Of course it's not moving. How can a fake watch work? Gary, 
had accurately pointed out the flaw. A fake. Sarah was shocked as she looked at Alex and Sue. Alex had an embarrassed expression on his face. Sue lowered her head and didn't care to look into her mother's eyes. Sue's face was red and flushed. This watch is not just a fake. Gary walked over to Alex's side and lightly tugged at his clothes he was wearing. Not only is that watch a fake, even the clothes and shoes he's wearing are fakes. Ah! Sarah scrutinized Alex's expression. Then she looked at Sue with a deep gaze, making them both squirm. Nonsense! What right do you have to slander my boyfriend? Who are you? If you say what he's wearing is fake, then you might think it must be true. Get out of here! Sue was shaken by her mother's gaze as she subconsciously made a move to fight back. Sue, you were deceived by this swindler. You should not have doubted my words. Why are his clothes fake? Gary pulled Alex's collar and skillfully flattened it. A small white strip was on the lining of the shirt that said, Item 52. Hey, you see, the clothes he's wearing are actually from the film crew. Gary took out a business card and handed it to Sue. This is my card. I opened a company and I have a business that provides props to film crews. Unfortunately, this guy's clothes, shoes, and watch are all rented from my company. What? Sue felt like she had been struck by a bomb. Her mind went blank. What else did she have to say? The clothes she had rented were rented from a film company? What kind of weird joke was this? Am I right, Alex? Gary asked provocatively as he looked at him in disdain. Get over here! Sarah pulled Sue over. She was furious and frowned anxiously as she spat out, You! You! Look at the person you're dating! Now say that I don't need to introduce you to anyone. If Gary weren't here today, I can see that you wouldn't even know that you were being lied to. She had no way to refute her mother's words. Sarah pulled Sue behind her. Who exactly are you? What are you doing here? Tell me honestly. Sarah walked up to Alex and shouted at him. I'm a student at Preston University. There is no need for Alex to hide anything. Student? You're a university student? Your school just taught you how to cheat, right? The scum of the country. The cancer of society. With your honest looks, I didn't expect you to be so full of evil tricks. Sarah pointed at Alex and scolded him. Why are you still in my house? Get lost. Do you not know how to leave? If not, I'll help you. With that, Sarah started to drag Alex away. What are you doing? Don't push him. Sue walked between Alex and her mother as she tried to stop her. If her mother chased Alex away, she would be forced to date Gary. This was not something she could accept. You damned girl, he's a swindler. Are you still going to let him stay here? Sarah glanced at Alex speechlessly. She began to beat him with her hands. Come on, you bastard, get out of my house. Don't lie to my daughter again. Get lost. Why did you hit him? Don't hit him, Sue screamed and hugged Alex, standing in front of him so that her mother could not get at him. Sue! Sarah was angered by her daughter. Do you not see that he's a liar? You're still protecting him. Do you want to be cheated by him until you're worthless? Until he's swindled away all your money and wasted all your time? Are you willing to give up? Are you stupid? Yes. Sue had never spoken to her mother like this before, but now she was ready to throw caution to the wind. I just like him. Whether he's lying to me or not, I won't marry anyone else. I won't look at anyone else you find. Sarah glared at her daughter. She was unable to say a word and felt she was on the verge of having a heart attack. Do you think you're serious? Seeing how her mother was about to fall ill, Sue's heart was torn and in pain, but she had to fight for herself. Don't suffer too much. Your health is more important. Gary comforted Sarah before preparing to walk in front of Sue. Sue, listen to me. This man is not good for you. Scram! Why do I have to listen to you? Leave now, shouted Sue. All right, I won't say any more. Gary shut his mouth resentfully. Of course, he wouldn't just leave like that. He went back to sit beside Sarah and comfort her. 
Alex didn't expect things to turn out like this. He frowned and looked at Sue. She nodded slightly, meaning that he should just listen to her. Twenty minutes later, Sarah finally calmed down. Gary, you can eat at our place today. Don't worry. Don't look at how things are right now. In a few months, you'll be able to brag. When the time comes, I'll let you know when you can date my daughter. Sarah saw that he had been insulted by Sue, but he hadn't left. It was obvious that he liked Sue very much. I have a good relationship with Alex, Sue said as she turned toward Gary. Even if I were to split up with him, it would be impossible for me to fall for you. It's all right, Gary, just listen to me. Sarah patted his hand and nodded at him. Gary smiled awkwardly and thought, Since I've already won over her mother, it'll be much easier for me to win over Sue. Sarah couldn't get rid of the swindler that day, but she couldn't let Alex get away with it either. She pointed to the bathroom and commanded, Go clean the toilet. Mom, aren't you going too far? Sue looked at her mother angrily. Do you think I'm being excessive? <sighs> Sarah sneered. If you don't clean the toilet, get out. You're nasty. Sue did not hesitate to quarrel with her mother again. Forget it. Alex held Sue's hand and shook his head slightly. He looked at Gary, who was smiling, and Sarah, who couldn't wait to yell at him again. He said softly, I'll go do it. With that, Alex walked toward the bathroom. Clean it good for me. If you can't clean it, you'd better get out of here. Sarah shouted at Alex's back.